just a quick reminder, just in case you missed the videos the last few days, I won't be uploading for uh, th two or three days, something like that. We've got Geo's wedding, uh, just in case you didn't know, and going up to pick up the puppy. Can't wait. Actually going up to see him tonight, and then we go back and pick him up. Wedding, then go back and pick him up um, on Sunday. Um, bring him back. I'm going to take, take Monday off as well, just to acclimatise him, getting used to the house, and all that type of stuff. So if you, it's, it's, everything is fine if you don't see any, any videos. Obviously, we've got some games. We'll do a little, little preview tomorrow, maybe look at a couple of things. There might be some injury news from West Ham, but I'm just recording this now before I take the drive up there. Drive to North Wales. Drive to Stoke, then back to North Wales. So there you go. That's that's nice, very nice round trip. Um, Tim Stighton is the uh, the subject of today's video because sort of late last night on the late Thursday night, it started getting reported. I think it was the Telegraph that initially reported it, and then it was getting reported everywhere else that Arsenal were lining up Tim Stighton as their next director of football. Now, for those of you that don't know, Edu has been doing that job at Arsenal. For years, uh, he's been there for a long, long time, and and he's he's gone. He's left. He departed a little while ago, uh, possibly to go to um, uh, to Nottingham Forest. But here was the interesting thing: when we discussed the Mohamed Kudus story that emerged start of the week, which was Kudus was a target, ninety million pound target for Arsenal. I remember Gio. I spoke to Gio about it on Patreon, and he said. He wasn't so sure because Arsenal had just lost their director of football. So he wasn't sure that the new director of football would, would sort of be in place to be able to, to target Kudus and bring him over to Arsenal. That sort of changes if it's going to be uh, Tim Stighton going over there. Now, I can't be the only one who, at the, well, I know I'm not, at the start of this season, who thought, oh, you know what, we've got a bit of stability now. I didn't know whether... A lot Mategi was going to be good, bad or indifferent. But I did think what we had was stability. We had the opposite of that at the tail end of last season, which was instability. We've had a little bit more meat on the bone in the last few days with uh, David Moyes doing his podcast. But what we did know last season, that David Moyes had banned Tim, Tim Stighton from the training ground and the dressing room. Um, there was definitely a disconnect there. And he's had some interesting things to come out and say about Stighton actually he hasn't directly named Stighton but he's talked about people working in football making decisions on transfers that probably don't have much experience uh, we, we all know who he was talking about um, you know let's be fair but it's clear they had a falling out at, at the end at West Ham so irrespective of who you think was right and who you think was wrong in that situation it, it, we had instability and I just thought at the start of this season we we got stability we've got a director of football in place uh, we've got a manager in place who's going to work with a director of football. And I thought that much was apparent judging on their first press conference that they had together. And, and you know, you saw all the media stuff that the club were putting out. You'd see Stuyton alongside Lopetegui. And it looked like a happy camp. It really, really did. And it's, it's actually incredible where we find ourselves now. If you look at how sort of <laughs> happy and um, I think optimistic we all were in June, July. And look where we are now. It's I've spoken about this a few times over the last two or three weeks, a disconnect behind the scenes at the club. And I think it's starting to unravel. And you, you, you're probably starting to see, see it coming out more publicly now. Th things are not good behind the scenes at West Ham. And I, I said last week, things are a mess behind the scenes. And, and I think it's, it's really quite depressing, actually, as a West Ham fan. And we just seem to always be teetering on the cusp of controversy. And, you know, part of a, Poor old Mark Noble, who said that those comments on the Upton Park pitch, West Ham ain't run like a circus anymore. Look, I mean, he meant it when he said it. He, he really did. He thought we were organised. We know we're good. We were, you know, we looked a pie out. Everything was looking good. I know we were moving out the stadium, but it did look like there was a project. It looked like there was a plan, at least um, at the time. Now we just look like a complete and utter mess. And it's sort of like I said in the... Um, in the preview that I did with Gio ahead of Everton, Everton are probably the only club who we can look at and think, oh, yeah, they're in a mess as well. Maybe Manchester United, but they they can afford to be in a bit of a mess because they've got loads and loads of money. Um, the Stuyton one... OK, there's two things that surprise me. There's one surprise me, one doesn't. Am I surprised that Stuyton won't be here next season? If this is the case, I'm not surprised. You know that. I said it. I said I, said I don't expect Stuyton to be in next season. I said that. Whatever I said it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I've been saying it for a little while now. I just don't think I don't think it's the case. Am I surprised he goes to Arsenal? Yes, 
Uh, that would surprise me. But um, I'm not entirely sure where this story has come from. And as I say, the Caduce thing makes it a little bit more believable. The £90 million price tag on Caduce was interesting because why would you pay £90 million when you can get them in the summer for 85 in July? Well, I, I can only assume that maybe, just maybe, Arsenal were looking to buy him, buy him in January for £90 million. Let's see if there's any truth to the story. Either that or the Stuyton, either the Caduce to Arsenal story or the Stuyton to Arsenal story. It is really, really hard to cut through the fog on this one. I don't think Stuyton's the best in class. And I, I, what I think is, I think this, there's a reason Liverpool didn't go for him. And that's because he wasn't exceptional. Man United were, were looking for a director of football. They didn't go for Stuyton. They went for Dan Ashworth. I think, I just don't think he's one of the best, basically. And he, what he was, a guy that was learning his apprenticeship at um, Bayer Leverkusen, who's come to West Ham. And has he completely proven himself to be one of the world's best at West Ham? No, I mean, he hasn't. It's been a mixed bag. I know there's some people who will um, question the, where Caduce and Alvarez came from. Some people say it was Mark Noble identified them. Some people say it was um, David Moyes. But, you know, but there's... I, th I think it's reasonable to hand... If you're going to look at his failings, I think it's reasonable to hand, you know, the ones that have worked out to Tim Stuyton as well. So... I'm quite happy to, to say that, you know, that those were Tim Stuyton's picks and I think could have been a really good player. I think Alvarez is a good player. I just think he's he's a bit of a loose cannon, isn't he, with the cards and all that sort of thing. So, you know, I think that he did really well there. He signed Mavropanos. Mavropanos, is Mavropanos a world beater? Probably not. We didn't pay world beater prices for him. We paid £17 million for him. When you start to look through the signings, uh, I think there were some, some really good signings last season. This season... Um, it's harder to pick your way through it. I don't, I don't, I really don't think you can attribute Max Kilman to Tim Stuyton. You just can't. Cause the, the the path for him arriving at West Ham is so obviously not partaking. David Sullivan has, has pretty much openly said um, that he was the one that highlighted and, and picked and identified uh, Crescencio Somerville. You can only assume that that was done via, via agents or something like that. So you look at this season and to Debo, I, th I think that was good. I think that was a good signing. I think he'd be a good player. I really do. And I think he is a good player. So I think that was a good signing and, and, and fair player. I think Stuyton did well, particularly to beat the likes of... I know Man United couldn't sign him because of Ineos in the end, but to beat the likes of Manchester United and Juventus to a player, uh, well done. You know, brilliant. Some of the other ones, like it's hard to say on Guilherme, isn't it? Because we don't know, again, we don't know if he's going to be the best thing since sliced bread or, or not. We, we, we you know... We just don't know. We've spent £20 million on him and he doesn't, he doesn't play, basically. Uh, Full Crooks is bad. That's a bad signing. Um, when you look at it, I, I really wish, we'd have done, wish I'd have done it. I wish I'd have taken a closer look, actually, and looked at his injury record before we signed him. But I think, I, I think number one, I swept away by us making so many signings. But also, if you remember, if you've been watching the channel for a while, I, I didn't believe we'd sign him. I thought he was a smokescreen um, to call Aston Villa's bluff on John Duran. So I wasn't expecting... But scratched beneath the surface, and it was quite obvious we were buying an injury-prone player. And, and so I think that's a bad sign. And so I think when you look at it, and I think it's a, mixed, it's a mixed bag, really. It's a mixed bag. I don't know who to attribute Guido Rodriguez to. I don't know. Um, some would say that he was wanted by Lopetegui. Whatever. Look, a free signing. He's OK. He's, just, he's not really cut out for the Premier League, though. So I, I'm not particularly going to blame Stuyton uh, for him. It could be Lopetegui. Like, it could be anyway. I mean, my point is, I don't think Stuyton is necessarily best in class. Um, and I'm not sure that Arsenal would be overly interested in him. I don't know. I, I, I may, be, may be proven wrong on that. Um, maybe he is. Um, I mean, the other thing is, they've done most of their stuff, haven't they, Arsenal? I think that's the other thing. They don't, Arsenal are not... A, club that needs a load of signings is going to be making loads and loads of signings so I'm not sure how much of a busy boy it'd be but um, yeah I think there's such a disconnect at the club if he did go I, d I don't know I'm, I'm sort of I'm, I'm ready I'm ready now for Mark Noble to step in and sort of take over quite a lot of the stuff actually at the moment if you, if you told me Mark Noble was going to take over the manager's role for the rest of the season I'd say okay then if you'd have told me Mark Noble was going to take over the um, director of football's role until the end of the season, I'd say, OK, then. 
I, it's, I think I just sort of lost um, I lost any any faith that behind the scenes things are going to work out well at West Ham. But the one area that does bring it into quite interesting um, a quite quite an interesting question in terms of what we do with our next manager is I think most of us would agree that Stuyton didn't get to pick the last manager and David Sullivan probably picked Lopetegui if Lopetegui loses against Everton and he does lose his job which I'm not entirely sure is going to happen um I think the club are worried. I think the club are looking at him, and but I, I still I still think Lopetegui's probably got enough in the bank to beat uh, Sean Dyche's Everton, particularly at the London Stadium. But if that didn't happen, then who picks the next manager? Is is Stuyton still advising? I know that Stuyton certainly provided a list of candidates who he thought should have uh, the West Ham job. Um, would that happen again? Is he is he on his way out? I mean, the, the club. The club were in the dark as anyone, and certainly their response yesterday was, "Well, we've we've heard the rumours too, but you know we don't know anything about this." So, um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a weird one, a little bit of a weird one. Anyway, there you go. Those are those are my those are my thoughts on it. Can't can't see it myself. Can't can I see Stuyton leaving? Yes. Um, can't see him here next season, really. Um, but can I see him joining Arsenal? Not quite so sure. Not quite so sure. Hey, but um, I I could well be wrong. Anyway, listen, I'll um. Oh, I think I'll catch up with you in the morning. I'll probably have a little morning video, which I'll record now. So I've had a couple of little bits of team news and whatnot, which I just want to go and check. A couple of injuries that there might be. So we'll do a little video on that. Aside from that, I'll probably... I can't believe I'm going to say this. It's a bit like a podcast that we've got um, that we've got over on, uh, over on Patreon. But uh, I'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>